CNBC's Jim Cramer did a segment a few days ago with quite the admission in it, and what's stunning is how little attention it's gotten since he said this. Watch. Me for doing what I just said, but you know, people have hated me for a lot of things, so yeah, let's just add that. The view. Yeah, I mean, look, there are a couple of services out there, and I'm not going to particularly name anyone as today, but some very nice people. Uh, that have been very good at running stocks. Now, running stocks is something that, of course, is illegal. Uh, that there used to be, the SEC used to look into these things and say, okay, well, is someone doing a pump and dump scheme? What is someone doing here? I don't find that to be the, the SEC is as active as they used to be and things like that. But you, you do have people running stocks and you know, it's kind of like, uh, confessions of a, you know, of a street. It, well, when I talk about, in Confessions of a, of a Street, in my first book, I talk about this, what I see these people doing these things, which is that they pick a stock and they run it for the day, and how horrible it is that they do that, because you never know when they're going to be done. And, and they catch people, uh, I was talking about last time, they bag people, they gun the stock, and then they liquidate the stock into the people that they've gunned it to. And I, it's a process that is even made worse by Twitter. I mean, Twitter's got uh, guys bagging, gun them in BGL, bagging, gunning, and liquidating everywhere. And, and so you got to be really careful. I mean, there's a lot of people playing games right now. The most I've ever seen, I'm sure Dave would say too, I've never seen so many games played with stocks, which is that, hey, we're taking this one up today. We're taking that one up today. So just so everybody understands, what he's saying is, it's the worst I've ever seen it on Wall Street right this second in terms of criminality. And that should be stunning to people because the 1980s was rife with criminal actions day in and day out on Wall Street. And then, of course, you go back to the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, same thing, which led to the subprime or, or, excuse me, it led to the Great Depression, the stock market crash in the Great Depression. But also, in the 2000s, the late 90s and 2000s, we had, you know, the subprime mortgage crisis in the Great Recession, and we effectively had no rules, no cops, no regulators, Wall Street acting again, rampant criminality. And he's saying that right now, it is the worst I've ever seen it. We have historical examples of, like, terrible consequences and market crashes and depressions as a result of this kind of criminality. And Jim Cramer saying, as of right now, it's the worst I've ever seen it on Wall Street. Stop and think about that, man. He says they're running stocks. That's an illegal scam. He says they're doing pump and dump schemes. Illegal. And he says the SEC used to investigate this stuff, and they're not doing it now. They're not doing it. So this links up in an incredible way with the modern moment because you see a lot of protests now. People are out there saying, defund the police, defund the police. Well, they've already been defunded on Wall Street. There are no police. There are no regulators doing their jobs on Wall Street. So the, the guys with the suits and ties, they're not the smartest guys in the room. They're the greediest guys in the room. And now they get to act out every single criminal fantasy that they have. And see, this is the... This is a story that doesn't get nearly enough attention. You had Matt Taibbi do a great job reporting on it, you know, in the 2000s. You got Lee Fong, who does great work now when it comes to um, corruption, for example, in politics and, and stuff like this. But there's very few people really reporting on this and talking about this when really this is such a bigger story than petty crime. You know, somebody robs a convenience store and that's huge news when it comes to local reporters. But you have just giant... Crimes, the likes of which we can't even wrap our minds around, crime is a business model, but since they're white dudes wearing suits and ties, nobody talks about it, nobody cares. So I'll just give you one more example of this to, to prove the point, but Goldman Sachs, they had fraud as a business model, quite literally. What they would do is they would take these subprime mortgage packages, okay, they'd bundle all of them together, and then they'd sell the packages to unsuspecting clients, and they would tell the clients, hey, just so you understand, you're going to make a lot of money off this. This is a great investment. So Goldman Sachs would sell this product as if it's great. And by the way, it was rated AAA, which means it's a very safe investment. Guess what? They bought the ratings agency. So they were lying when they said it was AAA. And then what Goldman Sachs would do is they would turn around and bet on those same packages to fail. So they make money by selling it as if it's good to a client and lying about it. And then they turn around and bet on that same product to fail. So they made money both ways. That's the kind of rampant criminality that happens on Wall Street. And again, what Jim Cramer is saying now, and he's immersed in this world, 
He's saying they're running stocks. That's an illegal scam. They're doing pump and dump schemes. The SEC used to investigate it. Now they don't investigate it. And it's the worst I've ever seen it on Wall Street. So really, we do have a situation where we've defunded the police. We've defunded the cops on Wall Street. And so we have just massive, rampant criminality running through the system. And when you're talking about crimes to the tune of tens of billions or trillions of dollars, that manifests elsewhere in the economy. You're going to end up screwing people. You're going to end up taking away their livelihoods, for example, with bad investments and basically effectively, you know, just robbing from people. So look out, man, because again, if people think that this is over, that this downturn that we've experienced as a result of COVID is over, oh my God, you got another thing coming. Listen, as of right now, we've totally decoupled the marketplace and how corporations and the wealthy are doing from how your average American is doing. The Fed with a trillion dollars a day in liquidity to pump up the market, the bailout from Congress, which goes right to these giant corporations. There's been a complete decoupling of how they're doing. But at the same time, it might even be the case that even though we fully socialized the market and fully socialized investors and the wealthy and the corporations, even with all that help, you can have the market go down again because really it's nothing but a giant casino. The market is nothing but a giant casino and these Wall Street gamblers are all addicted. And guess what? They're going to they're gonna crash the entire system. It's going to happen again and nobody's talking about it even though there are admissions now up front like, yeah, this is what's happening. Well, at some point the chickens are going to come home to roost. So buckle up for that.